Hey everyone, it is meteorologist Christy Shields and recently I had a teacher send in an email and say that the Belfont Area High School seniors and juniors are learning about the weather and they wanted to know a little bit more about how air pressure impacts us and what it has to do with weather. So I thought that would be a great explainer today. So that's what we're going to talk about here in this video. So just to give you an idea, we like to think of the atmosphere as an ocean because it gives you kind of a better understanding because like we can see the ocean, we've been to the ocean, many of us, compared to the air around us, which is kind of invisible and you can't really visualize that fluidity like you can with the water. So, first things first, the sun heats the earth unevenly and that creates different pressures and creates the wind and we're going to get into all of that here. So air pushes on us at all times. We can't feel it because our body is used to that air pushing on us. Now, to give you an example, back to the ocean, if we dive down as far as we can go into a pool, you can feel that water pressure all around you, right, as you continue to go further and further. Well, just think of it like this. We are living at the bottom of our atmospheric ocean. So we've got this force of air pressure pushing on us at all times. And in fact, that force is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now we measure our air pressure with a barometer and in meteorology, we typically use millibars as our unit here of air pressure. So above 1013 millibars, that equals high pressure. Anything below 1013 millibars is equal to low pressure. So let's get into this a little bit more. Again, air pressure depends on the temperature of the air, which again, because we're tilted and we're orbiting around the sun, we do end up having a different heating depending on the surfaces and where you're located on the earth. So the temperature of the air and the density of the air molecules is how we figure out what the air pressure is. And the ideal gas law is what we use, which is PV equals NRT. So we're using this and we're plugging the information in to find out what the air pressure is. So if pressure increases, when we plug it into this equation, so does the temperature. So to give you an idea, if the pressure decreases, that means we'll probably have a lower temperature. So I've got this really nifty thing here to kind of give you an idea of high pressure and low pressure. So I'm going to blow up this balloon here and that's going to represent our high pressure. And it's also a great indication of the fact that air takes up space. Because again, I think we kind of can forget that since air is all around us. So watch when I blow up this balloon, what happens? So we blow up this balloon and I close off this environment here and check it out. The balloon stays blown up even though I did not tie it off because again, we've got this closed environment, air takes up space. So we've got the air in the balloon, which is our high pressure, but in this environment, this is all filled with air as well. So the balloon does not deflate because this air is trapped inside our closed off environment. So what do you think happens if I let this out? If I unplug it, the balloon deflates because that high pressure and this works just like this in our atmosphere. High pressure also wants to fill in the air where there's low pressure. So we'll always see that air moving from a high pressure into a low pressure system because those molecules in the balloon when it's blown up are more dense compared to the air around it. So really cool experiment there and you can kind of get an idea about how air takes up some space. So now that we're talking a little bit about the high pressure and low pressure, let's get into it. So the science behind high pressure, when pressure is high, the winds are actually blowing away from that high pressure system. So winds blow clockwise in the northern hemisphere when we're around a high pressure system. And you're probably wondering, why don't the winds blow in a straight line? line? And instead they curve here on Earth. That has to do with the Coriolis effect, which makes it again blow in more of a circular motion. So what we've got going on is we've got these winds blowing away from the high pressure system in a clockwise motion. And as that happens, air is going to sink down from the atmosphere to fill in that space. So high pressure is more dense compared to a low pressure system. And this signifies clear weather. So above 1013 millibars, that's equaling high pressure. And that's why typically we see sunshine because again, we've got that air diverging out of the high creating clearer conditions. Now with low pressure, it's basically the opposite. So when pressure is low, winds are going to blow towards the low pressure system and winds blowing counterclockwise in our northern hemisphere. So you've got these winds converging and moving upwards in a low pressure system. So as that air pressure rises into the sky, 
it condenses water vapor and you get clouds and this signifies stormy weather. So in the winter you would get snowfall, but in the other seasons you would get the rainfall. So that's how that works. So below 1013 millibars, that's going to equal low pressure. So I've got another example here of high and low pressure. So we've got that air flowing out of a high and into a low pressure system due to the Coriolis effect. Again, because that's making the air curve instead of a straight line. We're over water here because Again, you need moisture to make a cloud, and what better way to do that than over a body of ocean water. So we've got that air sinking down and diverging out of a high and moving clockwise, creating sunshine, but then that air moves into a low pressure system. We've got that counterclockwise rotation and that air moving in and converging, creating clouds and also not so great weather. So that's why air pressure is super important for us in meteorology. So you're probably wondering, well, how do we know the different pressures across the country or across the globe? Well, there are certain places that are measuring that. Many locations, a lot of airports will, again, collect what the air pressure is in that area. And we take that information and we are able to make it onto a weather map and draw these nice, what we call contours or lines of where high and low pressure is. So for example, if you take a look in South Carolina, we've got an area of high pressure because you can see that circle there or that clockwise circle where it's 1020 millibars. So where you see 1020, again, that's above 1013 millibars. So that's an area of high pressure, clear conditions there. But if we take a look here, there's a low pressure system. Those millibars 994, so it's below that 1013 clockwise motion you can see all of the rainfall there where we're signifying those lows with those red low L's and then again the H's are blue highs so really interesting and like I said air pressure plays a big part in how we forecast the weather if you have any more questions on air pressure it can be confusing you can send me an email cshields at wtajtv.com